From the Schmoes No Network Studios in Los Angeles, California, it's time for Box Office Breakdown, where all the weekend numbers get chewed up, analyzed, and spit back in your face. And now, here's your host, the lovely Sarah Stratton, the diabolical Finstock, and every man's hero, J.T.E. Illuminati. Hello, Schmoville, and welcome to Box Office Breakdown, your one-stop shop for everything that happened at the movie theaters this past weekend. As always, we are joined by the enigma known as Finstock, the engineer known as Jete, and I am once again, sorry boys, not Sarah Stretton. No. I'm definitely not Sarah Stratton. My name is Mark Ellis. I'll be taking you guys through the rundown again this week. And Sarah will be back next week. She is in transit, I believe. Yes, she is. She's back from Italy. She was in the Betty Ford Clinic, I think. She, <laughs> she, she was calming down and relaxing somewhere in Malibu. Now, boys, uh, we had quite a weekend in the box office. Before we get to that, I just want to make sure you guys are alive after whatever your travels, your uh, your, your, well, your trials, your tribulations were this past weekend. I heard you and Makuga were uh, singing it up yesterday <clears throat> in uh, Barney's Beanery. I did some spots. I did uh, some some karaoke. Nice. And what was uh, that involved? Did it involve Journey? Uh, I, Makuga always sings Journey. Makuga did not sing Journey because we both sang Build Me Up Buttercup together. Wow. wow. Together. Yeah, as a duo. Sometimes we go up as a duo. We're, uh, we're a two-piece band. Super heterosexual. Here this is very a... Maverick and Goose. I, I see like a Maverick Goose kind of thing going on here. Yeah. Why does one of us, spoiler alert, have to die? Yeah. Why does one of us have to die? Huh? <laughs> I, Why are you going to sentence one of us to death and the other one to uh, the, 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 the for the rest of his life he's going to be thinking about that moment? I will never think about Josh McCuga and no, throw listen, dog tags into the Indian Ocean. No. McCuga is not here right now. No, he's not. Be honest. Who's Maverick? Who's Goose? I'm, to I'm totally Maverick. Oh, okay. I am Lieutenant wow. Pete Mitchell. I agree. All right. I agree with that. <laughs> I don't think you guys are confident in me being Maverick. Uh, let's get to the everything that happened at the box office this weekend. And boy, did we misfire, huh? Ooh, well, Everybody, Jitay got really yeah. close with his predictions last week. And as always, we're going to tell you guys what happened domestically at the box office first. Then we'll go to the international numbers. We have a very special top five list involving some guy named Tony Stark. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to have our predictions for next week. Hopefully, we're a little bit more accurate than we were this past week. Jitay did fine. We'll get to that. Here's the numbers. At number Number five was the judge ah. pounding the gavel, just outdoing Denzel and the Equalizer in the five spot. At number four was Annabelle, sixteen point three million dollars. At number three was Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good. It was a really crappy day for that kid, nineteen point one million dollars. Number two, Dracula Untold, yep, twenty three point four million dollars. <sighs> and at number one, who had it? Not this guy, Gone Girl. Again, for the second week in a row, $26.8 million. Fun stat to keep track of at home. That's only a 28% dip yep. from its opening yep. last week. Plus, oh. Gone Girl expanded into 240 more theaters oh, okay. than it was last week. So it's over 3,000 screens now. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Dracula Untold at number two didn't even hit 3,000 screens. So a lot of people like that name Dracula, especially around yeah. Halloween. Your guys' take. Let me just say, I like to think I have my ear to the ground. I have a, my finger on the pulse of the people. You're usually <laughs> laying on a ground yeah. somewhere. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Waiting for a train. Um, <laughs> so basically, I really go by word of mouth. Everyone I knew, friends, family, people I ran into the street were talking about Gone Girl. Yeah. And I, I really had a feeling like this thing's going to be number one again. You guys all said it was a little crazy. Especially for stock over here. Yeah. I, I thought it was so. crazy too because I thought Alexander's a family movie and mm -hmm. it's going to come mm -hmm. out and doesn't have a lot of competition because Box Trolls was really the only thing trying to take that family dollar away. And I guess people just really are excited about Oscar time. I had the same experience this weekend because I talked to my sister and my mother, as I do every weekend. <laughs> I'm a good boy. <laughs> yeah. Independently of each other, they're both in different places in Virginia. They both saw Gone Girl. Yep. And everybody just wants to see this movie. I think word of mouth is starting to spread a little bit. Finstock, your take. You know, I'm going to stand by what I said about this movie. I think it's a little uneven still. Um, <laughs> I'm not you asking know, for your review you know, of the <laughs> film. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, it's uh, it's getting those housewives and mothers and are taking their daughters there. And, you know, it's... <laughs> it's yes, not, my mom and my sister didn't see yes. it. We just, we've just we already covered they opened, that. They opened all the theaters near the jails over there. <laughs> That's where the 240 extra ones are. Um you know, I think it's it's you know it's going to be on track to be one of Fincher's highest grossing films of all time. I think so, and I think yeah. that with this it, it, Dracula coming in at number two, I mean, look, I saw the movie. I hope you guys didn't experience it as didn't well. Ask it. It's no. it's Universal trying to reboot their classic movie monster franchises, and Dracula was obviously the first one. That's the guy you want to lead off with, and he did not get on base as far as a critical reception goes. But look, twenty three million dollars. Do we think this number is going to dip from first week to second week? 
Yeah, because I don't think there's anything coming out to counterbalance it. I mean, you got some like... So you don't think it's going to dip? You got some lovey-dovey films. You got a kid film coming out. There's really nothing else like it except for Annabelle, and that's already kind of come and gone. Annabelle is not come and gone, though, because Annabelle is still... $16 million is a pretty solid take for its second weekend with a horror movie. I think that has a lot to do with October, people wanting to get scared. And I'm actually surprised Annabelle did as well as it did, considering the fact that there's a Dracula movie in theaters. I think enough people would see Annabelle and be like, that's the one that's going to scare me. Because Dracula, I'll tell you kids right now, and you can watch our review on schmoesno.com is that it was not a scary film and there's only a couple parts that even tried to be scary well i'll say if it, when it came to the trailers it, i don't think they were trying to hammer home that's scary it was really like a trying to make it like a big budget blockbuster was, almost summer film i think it was more of an action adventure movie yes, rather exactly. than a monster film it was what it could have been is a really cool origin story both as the origin of a hero and then later a villain and what it ended up being was a really 90 minute version of the first four minutes of bram stoker's dracula but where those first four true. minutes are or, awesome or it could have been uh, in bram stoker's dracula <laughs> yeah. they're great when you stretch them out <laughs> yeah. to so 90 minutes okay. now something that wasn't stretched out as all was alexander and the really crappy day because that book that it was based on is only like 20 pages right yeah. and it's got a lot of illustrations wow. it's perfect reading for jete or me for that matter <laughs> i was gonna say i never even heard of the book until this movie came out <laughs> yeah. well you should have because uh, a movie called liar liar i think also took a lot from the book what? the book came out before liar liar really and then liar liar hmm. has a very similar premise as alexander alexander did 19 million dollars this weekend do you guys think that's a solid take for a film like that or do you think it's maybe a bit of a letdown considering it didn't have a lot of competition i think they wanted more I mean, I know the studio wanted more, and they were pro- they were hoping it was number one, but obviously Gone Girl. That's what me um, and Sarah were hoping for. You know, as well. without Kenny, you know the Tiger. Rest you know, I think Kenny would have might have pushed it over the top. He should be on the poster. Twenty five there. Uh, that movie that movie's gonna go down, and it's not gonna make it. I don't understand why second week. Steve Carell's being labeled as like this a family film. The last time he, I remember him doing like a family film was Evan Almighty and that thing was no, horrible. Little Miss Sunshine, well, he's no? also done yeah, Little, Miss <laughs> Little Miss Sunshine which <laughs> is a very laughs. different yeah. kind of family film. <laughs> yeah. He also is the voice of Gru in the Despicable Me films yeah, Despicable Me 1 count. and 2 which are huge at the box office yeah. and I think the studios think they count. He's I think those are real money. dollars. No, but it's not making Monopoly money at the studio. It's, right. it's not Steve Carell's face on the poster is what I'm saying. It's, he's not selling that movie. His name might get the adults in there but the kids are going for the Minions and that's basically it. Uh, you know what? I'm going for the Minions too. Those Minions <laughs> you know, are Adorable. Uh, you know, it's the first time a uh, husband and wife uh, duo, like screen duo, um, went against each other in a, in a weekly thing in a long time. Like oh, Gardner Affleck? versus Affleck. Yeah. No one been Affleck. I'm sure the, you know, if they bet something, it probably wasn't dinner in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you think something else was yeah, involved? Yeah, I think something else was involved. <laughs> Perhaps the swapping of marital bodily fluids. If he's Thank wa- you for bringing yeah. that up, Bob. Uh, no let's go to the uh, international numbers now because I guess we can t- we can touch on the judge real quick, too. We're going to get into Robert Downey's top mm. five movies and his top ten of all time at the box office. The judge, is that disappointing or is that by the every studio wants to make as much money as possible, but by the time the movie actually comes out, does the studio know that, hey, maybe this it's not quite the Oscar film we hoped it was. Yeah. It doesn't oh, have that yeah. mass appeal, despite the fact that it's got two of the best actors of all time True. headlining the movie. Is this the take that they expected? No way. No way. Everybody wants, uh, you know, everybody wants Tony Stark. I mean, they should have had at least one scene in a trailer with him, like, sitting on a toilet reading an Iron Man comic or something like that. <laughs> Anything to get this guy out there. But I mean, Robert I, Downey defends I, his dad accused of know, murder, and you know, he reads Iron Man when he's taking a dump. See, uh, and, and the thing is, when you start seeing a lot of, like, him and his family, and then, like, talk about Iron Man 4 and other things like that, that's a studio doing damage control and trying to bury a movie because they know it's going to tank. Well, see, I thought that that was them trying to promote the film because he was all over the place saying, I will do Iron Man 4, I won't do Iron Man 4, I'll do it if Mel Gibson is in it, and it just happened to be the week that he had a film come out. So do you think that was a studio ploy saying, hey, you really got to talk about you being Robert Downey Jr. and Tony Stark so people are aware that The Judge is a movie that's happening? I'll say no because... It doesn't matter what movie he's doing, he's going to get asked those questions no matter what. Yeah. Especially now with Guardians and Avengers is coming up. It's the number one question everyone's going to ask him. Yeah, they want to talk about the judge, but really that's all they care well, about. Fans, he's Tony Stark. Well, his fans are young, and they know him as Tony Stark. Yeah. Nobody really, I mean, 
people like our age, yes, we know him from Weird Science and Back to School and other things like that. But you I mean, might, you know, you know, yeah, you know, stuff like that. But uh, I think the only way Robert Downey Jr. does a movie when he's not a, a you know a superhero anymore is uh, he should do a prequel to his character in Tropic Thunder. I'd watch that movie. Yes, and let me say this movie <laughs> that would be a very how they, they they've never done anything with Tropic Thunder. They created such a universe yeah. with the agents with oh, Tom yeah. Cruise and Matthew McConaughey, and then these actors that are in these great movies, and they went off to Vietnam to make this movie. Is there ever going to be a Tropic Thunder, some sort of spinoff, something? They thought they were going to do a Tom Cruise one. Yeah, yeah. off the agent. Or Stand the studio back head. and your face. Yeah. It's so good. It could be really, yeah. really yeah. funny. You had a point, Jatek. I was just going to say, when it comes to the judge, I didn't even put my top five. I honestly thought the running time, which is like two and a half hours, which is way too long for that kind Yuck. of movie. And you're saying how they wanted it to be like an Oscar film. That's how they started off the advertising. And it literally... There was this shift where they made it more like a lighthearted, you know, comedy about a family. I'm like, that's not how you sold it to me the first time. Mm-mm. So I think they kind of knew what was going down. And yep. also, it didn't get great uh, reviews when I think it premiered at Sundance. Yeah, again, I mean, it did, it was positioned as an Oscar yeah. film. It's opening at the right time. It just didn't uh-huh. quite hit that mark. Now, internationally, Dracula Untold, again, you put that guy's name on a marquee, oh, people man. are going to pay to see it. A uh, th- total $33.9 million from 40 different territories, which made it the highest grossing film internationally. However, Guardians of the Galaxy opened in China this weekend. Oh, my God. And it is Disney's third best uh, debut over Iron Man 3 and Captain wow. America 2 in the Chinese market. And then now you look at Gone Girl, which is earning $27 million this weekend on just over 6,000 screens. And that's a very nice international number. Here's what's interesting. Lucy, the Scarlett Johansson yes. film, Oof. is finishing up its overseas run and it ended the weekend with $2 million, a little bit over that from 60 territories. The action film has monster. grossed that's a, a total hit. of $286 million overseas and a total of $412 million worldwide did you guys see lucy did i actually saw it this past wednesday you <laughs> you see more movies yeah, i know i applaud you movies. you really he really does see a lot you of really do love uh, movies there's a bargain theater near my house that plays like two dollar theaters yeah and I, that's I like, where you have your ear listen, to the ground i'll tell yeah. you something i might see dracula if it comes there just because for two bucks in the afternoon on board i'll see it well it's crazy uh, but lucy the thing is about dracula is the money it makes here is just icing on the cake yeah that movie is all about foreign dollars and that's pretty much it it's gonna also, be a substantial write-off on the, on the american box office it's like an hour and 24 minutes Ooh, uh dracula is a pretty quick watch i, I yeah it's no, somewhere... i was talking about lucy oh lucy yeah i was okay. talking about lucy is like an hour and 24 minutes so it's pretty quick but so is alexander alexander's only 82 minutes uh, and so true. we'll see oh, wow. i don't know if comedies translate better to foreign mm-hmm. markets i think action films and these big sort of blockbuster yep. or something like a big headliner like a dracula mm-hmm. is going to do better overseas or obviously gardens of the galaxy is going to do great wherever it opens and later in the show i can Cannot wait to hear Finstock's answer for what the title of Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day is going to be overseas. Also, yeah. I don't want to discredit Luke Bassan, who directed the film. Mm-hmm. He is really popular in Japan, China, and probably all, all France. over the world. France, obviously. Yeah, and, I would guess uh, France. He's really like a well-known director. You know, most American directors are well-known all over the world. He's one of the few who's an outside director who's just as well-known. Now, before we get to uh, Finstock's foreign film names uh, and their changes and how humorous they can (laughs) possibly be, I want to touch on this really quick because you brought up earlier, Finstock, that sometimes studios, they just look at American box office as icing on the cake because films are going to do so well internationally. And that's even true with Arnold Schwarzenegger now. And I hate to say it, your hero who is on the mug that you bring to the studio every week, Mm -hmm. despite our pleas to not, is Sylvester Stallone, is that like you look at a movie like what they made together even Expendables they're going to do so well overseas Mm -hmm. that studios is that what they're more marketing Dracula towards? Absolutely I mean those honchos just want to get some steak and go to strip clubs and spend all that money and you know (laughs) in that order (laughs) you know what it does it pays for their uh, their studio uh, deals over there you know uh, over at Warner or Universal and their place for their lot space and their furniture over there is basically what Dracula does in the American box office for them. You really don't sound pleased with Dracula at all. I hope that no, you like I, Frankenstein's I you, Monster or the Mummy a little bit better. I, I, and, eat a box of cow chocolate and read the back of it and that's about that's all you need to know about Dracula. Quick side note, uh, Keanu Reeves is doing a lot of press right now for John Wick. Yeah, very excited to see that. It's me too. October 24th. And he just talked about the other day how hard it is getting the new Bill and Ted film off the ground. Because while it has a huge, you know, following in America, 
it doesn't have a big following internationally, and that's why they're having trouble getting funding for the film. That's right. And speaking of Keanu Reeves and Dracula, man, is he the one <laughs> lead point in that Bram Stoker's film? But you know what? You guys go check that out and then come <laughs> yeah. back and report to us. Okay. Before, uh, without any further ado, Finstock, I want to get to the foreign film name changes in yes. movies this week. Now, we usually do the Chinese market, but yeah. we decided to expand. We're going to expand a little bit. I mean, I don't want to pick on the Chinese as much as I was. I mean, they're just, they're just phenomenal with the names, but there's other countries, too, that uh, come up with some zingers. All right, so what do we got this week? Once again, it's uh, four choices. Okay. okay. Now, One for for you false. for you guys tuning into Box Office Breakdown for the first time, welcome. Please uh, make sure you rate and subscribe to the show on iTunes and comment as well. Bob is going to tell us four movie titles. We have to guess the one mm -hmm. that is not real. And Correct. these are actual names that they took from an American film and changed it to suit the Swedish language better. Yes. Is Swedish a different language? Oh, the, the, we, the, yeah, have, Swedish. Okay. There's yeah. four different uh, territories. We'll make a note of that. I'm using, <laughs> four, I'm using yeah. four different territories. Oh, okay. Wow. Because the gold is from China, but this stuff is good, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You go with the country right. and then the title yeah. of the film. From our friends from Sweden. Mm -hmm. There's a movie called Swingers. Obviously, yes. everybody has seen it. Great movie. In Sweden, they call it, Hey, Where Are the Babies? It makes sense because Vince okay. Vaughn calls the ladies babies. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna withhold judgment until the, I hear yeah. the rest of these. From Spain, the pacifier oh, God. with Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. Yeah, a super tough kangaroo. What? <laughs> Sounds mm -hmm. like some sort of weird slur. Mm -hmm. All these kangaroos <laughs> running around yeah. in movies these days. Uh, so, what they called bald people? From or? our friends in uh, the Western Bloc, Germany. Okay, that's where it's at. Ocean's Eleven. Ten men and a black guy. <laughs> Speaking That's of racism. Semi racist, wow. yeah. It's Germany. <laughs> it's Germany, it's true. And from our friends in Thailand. The water boy. Dimwit surges forth. <laughs> Wow. Okay, here's what I'm going to go ahead. Those all could work. I think I'm going to nail this this week. I think that the Thailand film is definitely real. I think that the kangaroo one is also real. I think the Swedish film is real. I think that the 10 white guys and a black guy Ocean's Eleven title is the one that is not true. Your, your uh, guess, I you want, should take. I want that Ocean's Eleven to be false, but I think it's true. <laughs> I'm going to go with the... Uh... Vin Diesel one. I just don't see a super tough kangaroo. Yeah, why would they call him a kangaroo? It makes no sense. Because he's carrying the baby with on the pouch. Oh, the that's right on the poster. So there I wasn't like, go. going visual on it. It's kind yeah. of a humorous. You know, you see the poster, yeah. and then you're like, oh, they're calling him a I'll, kangaroo. Right, that's kind what? of funny. I'm gonna yeah. say the last one, the water boy. That didn't sound right. Dimwit surges forth. Yeah, he did though. He I don't did. know about that. Surge forth. He definitely surged. That being said. Uh, Mark Ellis, you are correct. All right. Ah, yes. Woo. Damn it. I, well, I tried to fool you with the, you know, the, the racial epithets, but it didn't work. Well, oh, you man. threw Germany in there, and I know why you threw Germany because later on the show we're going to talk about what's coming out this weekend, yes. and I know that you are very excited about the film Fury. Now, before yeah, yeah. we get to Fury, I want to talk about our top five this week, which is going to be the films of Mister Robert mm. Downey Jr. Uh, now, look, you guys know him. Uh, probably a lot of our viewers know him primarily as Iron Man, as the guy from the Avengers. Probably Probably the best part of the Marvel Universe, or at least one of their best superheroes. But he's also an Oscar nominated. He's never won an Oscar. He was nominated for Chaplin. He was nominated for Chaplin. Yes. And he is revered as one of the greats that we currently have or have ever had. That's recent, though. Back in the day, mm -hmm. he had so many problems. He was I think really he a washed was, up actor. I think he was always known as a prodigious talent. He just We knew he had a lot of problems, too, and he couldn't get clean for a long enough period of time to really get it together. In the 90s, Correct. I felt like he was somebody that had a lot of potential and never lived up to it mm -hmm. until his resurgence. In okay, 2000s. now what's his career look like in your through the prism of Finstock, through the beard mask? I mean, I thought his best role ever was in Back to School. Um, oh really? Yeah, okay. I, mean, he's, I think he's that really movie good. is phenomenal. If you kids haven't be? seen Back to School, treat yourself. Yeah, Burt Young was amazing in it. And so was Dan Sam Kinison was Sam amazing Kinison, in it. Uh, Sally Kellerman was in it. Um, you know, I like him as that quirky character. That's why I think he really worked for Iron Man. You know, his quirky one-liners, the his facial expressions. You know, he always has his hair messy in these movies. Um, that's why I don't think the judge worked. I think he's, he looks too studious. They, they don't want that. I mean, All right. Well, know? yeah. Well, okay. I'm going to make you guys guess because I don't want to just harp on his comic book films. The Avengers is obviously his his top grossing film of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Then the next three spots are Iron Man films. Now, you guys can debate amongst yourselves. What order do you think the Iron Man films are in his top box office grossing movies? Now, you got two through four. What do you think is... I think it's three, two, one. You think it's three, two, one. I Finstock. think it's two, three, one. 
You guys are both sadly mistaken. Iron yeah. Man 3 is number two mm. at $409 million. At number three is the original Iron Man, mm. $318 million. And at number four of his all-time films is Iron Man 2, which is just below the first Iron Man, $312 million. So mm, gotcha. nobody's uh, crying over that spilled milk too much now. Um, after that, we have the Sherlock Holmes films. Sherlock mm -hmm. Holmes and then yep. Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows is at the five and the six spot. So what do you guys think rounds out the top 10? I'm gonna give you guys four movies of Robert Downey Jr. to pick from. What do you guys think is numbers seven, eight, nine, and 10? Man, I think they'll probably be fairly recent because yeah. a lot of his other stuff didn't make a ton of money. It was yep. just critically acclaimed. Probably that junk the soloist. Yeah, I was about to say the thing. soloist is not. So is not, not in the top oh, 10. Um, Due date. Due date is in the top 10, Due cocking in at the there. number eight spot. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well done. Finstock brought up another movie that... Uh, Tropic, yeah. Thunder? Tropic Thunder? Tropic Thunder mm -hmm. is number seven. At number 10 is The Shaggy Dog. Oh, God. Are you kidding me? Was he a voice in that? Yeah, I think he's the voice of the dog, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. I don't think he was actually on screen. I don't think he'd actually show yeah. himself Oof. in a movie he's like a that. He's a tentpole guy. I bet you if Denzel wasn't the judge, he would have oh, did a hell about that. That was a paycheck. And at number nine, you guys are not going to believe this. At number nine, Rob, it's still in the top 10 of Robert Downey Jr.'s highest grossing films. It opened to eight. $8.8 million Weird way science. back in 1986. Weird Science. Back to school. Oh, yes. Oh, nice. Bingo. I told wow. you this movie's fantastic. It is one of the funniest films you've ever seen. If you don't know that much about Rodney Dangerfield or Sam Kinison, both two of the greatest comics of all time, you get to see Robert Downey Jr. in the supporting friend role. Yes. I and uh, it's, a, it's the triple Lindy yeah. of movies. And Billy Zapka's in it, too. Oh, Sam Kennison is awesome as the history teacher in that movie. Oh, yeah, my God. He's uh, one of the best. Well, oh, amazing. Man, sure one of the best of all time. That. Yeah. And when you spin it towards this week that we have to look forward to in movie theaters, now, I've already seen this movie, Fury. I know you guys are really excited about Fury. Yeah, it looks good. Fury. Fury. The movie, right? Is that yeah. about that? Yeah. It's opening this well, weekend. I'm really, I'm really glad they did it, you know... Um, a movie about this you know people confined in like a small space wearing you know these animal outfits having sex with strangers <laughs> what? and stuff like what do you that. what furry the movie furry oh it's like stock. where those people wear those those you're talking those... about furries which are people yeah. that oh, like to dress God. up in full <laughs> animal costumes yeah. and then have sex with each other yeah. the movie is called <laughs> fury Oh, the Brad Pitt tank movie. It's Why would they make a movie about one. furries? They should. I think they. I think it's out. I've seen some documentaries. And if they were going to make a movie about strong. furries, you do not open it against a movie called Fury. Or maybe you do. Maybe yeah, that's smart it's box cross office marketing. Oh, it's cross marketing. Yeah, it's it's like when you have a big dinosaur movie open in the theaters, and then you have another one that just came out like direct mm -hmm. to DVD, and people are like, "Oh, well, that's good as that's just as good as Jurassic Park. Let's rent this." What do you think the movie was going to be about? <laughs> Oh, I, I know it's people in confined space. Aren't they like caught in a tank or something like that? It's weird that you knew it was about a confined space, but uh, you didn't yeah. know the rest of the story that you thought yeah. it was a bunch of furry animals <laughs> having sex with each other My in a tank. Is, it's like when you, you know, they had an HBO documentary on it a, a couple of years back. Um, who's under there? I mean, it could be Brad Pitt or it could be like Gerard Depardieu or something. I mean, you got to just play, I guess, roll the dice. <laughs> you want to hear, you want to hear a funny story about furries? Is that a couple weeks ago, I was in Seattle with our uh, associate producer of the Schmoes No Main show, Copster. Okay. And we were doing the Tough Mudder up there for Edge of Tomorrow to promote that film for Warner Brothers. And uh -huh. we competed in the Tough Mudder. Did I finish? Was I great? Of course I was. At the same hotel, there was a furry convention. Are you I am not lying Are you to you. Serious there was right a now? furry convention, Dude. and there were all these stuffed animals walking in, and we wanted to go, but we were all too tired from the mud. We're just laying in our bed sore, and we couldn't get out to go see the furries interact <laughs> with each other. That's a real thing that happened in Seattle a couple weeks ago. What were you planning on doing? Were you going to treat like a zoo? You're just going to watch from the outside. <laughs> it's a petting zoo. You can just literally walk up and pet people, and it's so weird to see the looks on these people's faces yeah. when they walk into the furry convention because you're thinking, are they treating this as a joke, or is it? really a way that they get aroused like you can't it's get big, it's a big fetish it's a it's a weird thing because the, you just don't know and usually they were walking in it was one person in a full animal costume and then somebody else who's like the owner like they walk oh. in just a normal dude so i figured i could just go in there and be like the normal guy <laughs> and just kind of hang around somebody dressed as a squirrel or whatever and they wouldn't know that i wasn't supposed to be there it's what? like the key parties they used to have in the 70s <laughs> Yeah, as long as you're with somebody as a key, yeah. you're golden. You know what? One might have been Jennifer Gardner. Who knows? For losing the box office bet. Hey, Affleck could dress as Batman. 
<laughs> yeah, it would work perfectly. It, it certainly does. They have the kangaroo pouches on the, the you know, the, the parts for easy access. It's nuts. Oh, my God. We all got to do a show. There's no furry yeah. convention. Uh, so Fury is uh, coming out this weekend. It is the Brad Pitt World War Tank movie, Finstock. And also yeah. stars Shia LaBeouf, uh, Logan Lerman, John Bernthal from Walking Dead. He's great. It oh, is. So and Michael good. Pena, too. It is a fantastic film. Our review of it isn't up yet, so I'm doing a little bit of a spoiler as to what I felt about the movie. Mm. I loved it. Some people aren't giving it quite the Oscar buzz. Yeah, I've heard of mixed things. It's David Ayers. I mean, he did Training Day. He did was it, uh, Sabotage? Sabotage. Yeah. He did Sabotage I mean, of Schwarzenegger, which I'm probably doing well overseas, th- but you know. Of course. I think he's getting better. I mean, he did uh, End of Watch, too, End which watch. is a fantastic film. He does very finals. well. I'm just, I'm just concerned about they're giving him a lot of money now. To do this. this is a bigger budget movie. I think it was $80 million. Um, Great casting, though. I mean, Shia LaBeouf really got into the role. I don't know if he's playing crazy or he's really crazy now. I'm not really sure. That's everyone's asking I mean, that. You know, I've seen I seen him the other day at Tender Greens over on Ventura, and he was just like eating a salad alone, like looking like really creepy. You know what's really odd and, about that is that I saw him in that same area uh, really? about a month ago at Jersey Mike's, and he was what? just there hanging yeah. out by himself. Looked like, he he looked like the most normal dude in the world, though. You yeah, know, he, he, he didn't he look like the guy that used to wear a bag over his head. He's he's wearing like this. He's wearing these like tight black jeans. He's always photoed in and he's like these gray camouflage like sort of like saboteur like G.I. Joe boots and he was just eating it with a giant beard and he like was putting pepper on everything and I'm like this guy's a here's what I think is Shia LaBeouf's <laughs> problem I think that he gets really nervous about how he's going to be received when a movie opens and I think yeah. that because you saw the same thing with Nymphomaniac when he went crazy mm-hmm. or the Transformers when he has these problems on set it's sure. always when he's got a movie that's about to come out so I think that he just gets really in his head about it's how am I going to be received what's going to happen are people going to like me in fear are they going to like this different turn and so then he just internalized it so the next time I see Shia LaBeouf at Jersey Mike's I'm just going to walk up to him I'm going to put my hand on his shoulder I'm going to say hey pal it's not your fault. Yeah, it's not your fault. He's one of those actors who loves the process of making a movie, but hates the process of promoting it. Correct. And going on in all the red carpets. He's one of those actors, like Daniel Day-Lewis and stuff. Well, the crazy part I'm not about... not saying he's that good. No, 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 of course. <laughs> Don't well, the crazy me about Take caution he's in your not, tone, Commander. Yeah. Just saying, he's one of those guys, like Harrison Ford hates doing... He'll get you in 10 he's, no, uh, he's great in the movie, too. He didn't take a shower the whole production. He, <laughs> pulled, out, he pulled out his own <laughs> tooth. And he was like, the makeup lady was like putting scratch on his face. He's like, you want to see scratches? And started like scratching up his face with like a little pocket knife. You know what? It's Finstock, but it's also Shia LaBeouf. So we really don't know what's true and what's <laughs> the only mockery. Person, and the only person on the set who wasn't pissed off about him not taking a shower was Brad Pitt because he doesn't take him either, apparently. Brad Pitt doesn't need to take a shower. That guy no. is a handsome man. And yeah, what is he, 50 now? I think he just turned 50. Yeah. It's incredible. Oh, How do we think Fury's going to do with the box office this weekend, boys? I think it's going to do good. I mean, listen, Brad Pitt will bring him in. I think it's, it's proven. There's tanks in it for a reason. Um, <laughs> Shut up. I think it, it's gonna. And there's be, no furries <laughs> in it for another reason. I wish. Tanks. I, I, it's gonna a tank's gonna uh, tank, but it's gonna be number one. It, yeah, well, the way it's gonna, gonna tank. It's not gonna make the money they want. It's so you think a, it's just an overall down weekend one, for yeah. the box office? Soft number one. Okay, I don't but then, think the bo- I don't think the studio's looking for huge numbers. They want decent numbers. Yeah, this is not a, a huge number kind of film. This will be lucky to crack sixty five million domestically. Now you have this movie, The Book of Life, that's also coming out. It's an animated film, oh, yeah. and it's got some big time vocal talent such as Channing Tatum in the mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. How's that gonna do? I saw the footage at Comic Con, and I thought it looked. Pretty, I was pretty surprised. It actually looked really interesting. You were Different. you were a little loopy at Comic Con though. We yeah, really was, through the ringer. Yeah, there. I thought it was an acid trip, and the movie plays a little <laughs> bit like acid trip. So, but no, visually it looks great. It's you know it's about the Day of the Dead, which is like this Mexican holiday. Mm-hmm. So it has a lot of undertones, you know, that culture, which I'm think is really interesting. Yeah, it glorifies Mexican heritage. Of you course. should be happy about that, right? <laughs> Why would he be no, happy? He's not he I'm Ecuadorian. Oh, it's totally sorry. different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're half Ecuadorian. Uh, half Ecuadorian. And half. Mexican. So, Mostly Irish. So you got North American. <laughs> and South, I'm a full American. I think you guys are like halfsies. You guys are halfsies. You he's definitely American. Not I got North and he's, South. You guys are just North He's definitely not Mexican because he didn't see Dracula this week. <laughs> True. <laughs> it did very well in Mexico again yeah, this weekend. Of course it did. The Best of Me also opens. I believe it's a Nicholas Sparks film. That is it, Now, mm-hmm. again, I think that even a lot of women who this movie is catered towards mm-hmm. by this point are like, that you're trying to get me to cry. You're going to have some sort of love story. There's going to be some sort of monkey in the wrench. And then we're going to throw a disease in the last 30 minutes just to make everybody weep. Is that going to be the top one of the box office? Diseases are fashionable now in movies. It's the best of me, but we're yeah. probably going to see the worst of people it's in this be like film as well. Twenty Ebola movies in like the next 
two years probably. I mean, I've I've seen no marketing for this film. I have not seen a trailer, a commercial, and I go to movies a lot. You go to movies a lot, <laughs> I but have you not also, seen a trailer for this movie. But you, like all of us on this panel, uh-huh. we're very interested in athletics on TV. That's primarily yeah, what that's we true. watch, and so you're not going to see a lot of the best of me marketed in that on those stations. Like ESPN, you mm-hmm. know, isn't going to have that in between true. their Sports Center coverage. I'm so. not watching Lifetime very often. What a view. Well, let's get to it. And I well, think we both watch Lifetime is yeah. more than we would care to admit. <laughs> um, let's get to our predictions then, boys. What do we think is going to be the top five of the movies this weekend? Now, who won last week? GT I won. D- dominated. Jate yeah. won. So now you have won two weeks. Yes. Finstock has won two weeks. Yes. And yep. Sarah has won no weeks. Zero. Yeah, zero Consake. weeks. Okay, well, don't She's worry, like the Sarah. She's Jaguars of the movie prediction. <laughs> don't say that yet. I'm playing for Sarah again this week, and I apologize. I went one out of five. Mm-hmm. Last, I did get the judge right. And this week, I plan on going five out of five, but I will defer to you guys. What do you think is going to be the top five? Uh, I'll start off since I was number one last week. Uh, wow. I'm going you number, have the honor. Fair going, enough. I'm sticking with Fury. Number one. Okay. Because I think Brad Pitt's going to pull it in. Just like Ben Affleck pulled in audience for Gone Girl, this first week is going to do the same thing for Fury. Number two, I'm going to go Book of Life. Uh, I think the kids' films, I don't think everyone really wants this. I mean, it's one thing when you have a live-action kids' film, but the animated is what really brings those kids out. And I'm sorry, it is. You guys That's are the two people see. I do not want to see at a kid's movie, by the <laughs> no. way. Yeah. You guys walking in yeah. together, sitting amongst <laughs> kids is something that I think you could yeah. call Child Protective Services over. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. Then I'll say Gone Girl. I think it's going to fall off just because these two big films are coming out. Number four, I'll go Dracula. I think it's going to have a big drop off just because of word of mouth, even though it did get a pretty good cinema score, but no one I know that's seen the movie likes it, so I got to imagine it's going to fall off. And I'll end it with Alexander, which I think is going to take, you know, it's going to take the biggest fall because of Book of Life is coming out. Okay, but it only made $19 million at the box office this week, and you got to hang saying. on that's true. It's to still number gonna, five. It's going to hang on to number five. Hmm. Ben Stock. Interesting. Um, yeah, the Brad Pitt tank movie. I wish it was the other, you know, the... If it was about furries, it would Stuffed definitely be animals, number one. But oh my god, it should be uh, a scary furry movie. Would be great. Is that, it sounds like something that you're actually like interested in because look, well, let's face it, you wear right you wear <laughs> a beard. Write a script there, there's bit. parts of you that likes yeah. costuming anyway. Yeah, yeah, so maybe absolutely. this is the next evolution. Maybe next yeah. year by this time, you're just walking around in a the kangaroo furry. outfit the <laughs> whole day. Amazing. On the yeah, it's a, it's very possible. <laughs> you could dress up as Kenny the watch, Down Syndrome oh Tiger. Oh my god, you could dress as Kenny. The and then I'll watch the pacifier in Sweden. Uh, you know, the guy with the super kangaroo. <laughs> What's America watching this week? Uh, I think it's gonna be Fury. Um, like I said, soft. Uh, not really too soft, but it, it about twenty eight million. I'd say maybe twenty eight, maybe twenty six. Uh, you got the Book of Life. Probably it. It'll crack twenty two because all the Mexicans have already seen Dracula, so now they're just gonna go see this. <laughs> <laughs> they have all seen Dracula. It's yeah, very well in Mexico. Uh, Gone Girl, okay. uh, at, at number three, probably about 17. So it'll probably dip another like 35 to 40%. Okay. Um, Dracula Untold um, probably is going to be number four at 12, maybe even 11. And uh, I'm going to go with the... Uh, you know the scary doll again i really? think this oh, movie wow. can do this again at number five probably roughly nine to ten million dollars you I know mean, we don't ask you to actually quote the exact numbers <laughs> it's going to make but i appreciate you making yeah. the extra effort yeah and making us all feel like you know exactly mm-hmm. what's going to happen and maybe yeah. he does know what's going down at the box office Not i think both week, you guys for five i think y'all are mistaken i think that the the three movies that are opening this weekend are going to take the top three in some spot i'm going to go with the book of life wow at number one I okay. think, and that, again, this isn't me. This wow. is Sarah guessing mm-hmm. this. Yeah. So, if uh, please, <laughs> aim all your hate mail okay. yeah. towards so the book her. Of life number one. So, the book of life is going to be number one. I think Fury is going to edge out the best of me at number two. So, I got the book of life, then Fury, then the best of me. Then we're going to have Gone Girl, and I'm going to put Alexander at five. I think Alexander is going to jump above Dracula Untold because horror movies just do not do well their second weekend, especially when it's a really bad horror slash action slash reboot. And you know what? It's it's none of you. It's, you also, let's not forget who's behind Book of Life, Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> my yeah. favorite guy to pronounce. Your favorite, one so, of your favorite names. <laughs> when, yes. when that guy's behind the film, I mean, it's definitely going to help it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, maybe if Dolph Lundgren makes an appearance in it. I think um, that you really want to see Sarah wear this mask. Um, because now if Sarah loses... Yeah, she wears the mask. What, she has to be down... Well, they were saying... It's that, whoever gets the five first, right? Mm-hmm. And you're at two already. Right. And Sarah's at none, so... Yeah, and... 
doesn't look like she's going to win this week either with the picks that you have. I think that I'm I'm pretty confident in these picks. Do you want her to wear the mask? I was last week. I wouldn't hate if she wore the mask, but it'd be weirder to see you without the mask than it would be to see her with the mask. Uh, That is all the time that we have today for Box Office Breakdown. We want to thank you guys for being great fans of the show and everybody out there in Schmobile. Make sure you guys subscribe to the iTunes feed, rate and comment on there, and like our Facebook page. You guys are currently involved in that. Yes. Yeah, we try to post as much as we can. I like to brag whenever I do good. There you go. <laughs> That's what I use it for. And as always, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Schmoes No Podcast, as well as the main channel, Schmoes No, right there on YouTube. For Mr. Bob Finstock, for Mr. Jete, the Enigma, the Engineer, I am merely Mark Ellis. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Box Office Breakdown. Sarah will probably be back next week, and if not, you'll probably see this ugly mug again. See you guys soon. For producers Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, and the entire Schmoes No Network crew, we would like to thank you for listening to Box Office Breakdown. Special thanks to Kevin Undergaro and Maria Menounos, the author of Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness in stores now. To watch or listen to other Schmoes No Network episodes, get movie news, and join the conversation, be sure to visit schmoesno.com. And don't forget to rate and review this show on iTunes. I'm the Pit Boss, and this has been a presentation of Schmoes No. 